Oops, that one was somehow missing. I promised a comparison between the two different revolt motors. Uh, apologies, I simply forgot that one. Here it comes. So um, those are my personal opinions. Um, feel free to argue against them, to discuss it with me, just based on my experience, what I found out so far. So the well-known 160 Pro looks like that. That's all the one used in my measurements. And meanwhile, since probably half a year, they offer a machine which is called 160E, which is water-cooled and has also some more modifications I'd like to talk about. So first of all, as I said in before, it's water-cooled, which is a good idea to lower the temperature of a copper winding package because copper has a positive temperature coefficient. It increases its resistance by 0.3% or 0.4% for each Kelvin, um, but on the other hand, I never ever experienced any critical temperatures in the uh, stata, so I don't know whether it's worth the additional effort for a liquid cooling system, or, um, yeah, it de depends on. Um, furthermore, they increased the shaft diameter to 25 millimeters, which is a fairly thick rod. Um, I've got just 19 millimeters uh, instead of the 20 millimeters default shaft of the 160 Pro because I had lots of accessories, uh, polys and so on for 19 millimeters and 25 millimeters would be too much in my case. I need a fairly high reduction ratio later on. So uh, yeah, 25 millimeters simply too much. Next modification they performed is installing the hall sensors on a separate PCB near the stata, whereas the 160 uh, Pro has the hall sensors uh, installed in the winding package, which led to some complaints in the internet that the signals generated of the hall sensors are not, not precise, sharp enough. But on the other hand, I never ever experienced any problems with the hall signals at any speed, any current. So, yeah, might be a step in the right direction for some of you. Um, next modification is they're using magnets of a slightly higher grade. Now it's the type N45H, which is uh, a little stronger than the N42H used in the 160 Pro. The 45 refers to uh, the maximum energy product in Mega Gauss Ersted. Uh, th those are fairly old units nowadays. It's based on Tesla, uh, so volt seconds per square meter and amps per meter. And the more interesting one for, for uh, you folks might be such a value, residual um, induction, flux density, which is uh, known uh, with the unit Tesla. Those magnets have 1.3 something Tesla and the N42H is just a little less. So over here, not such a big step, but uh, as far as I understood, they also use thicker magnets, which is uh, also a good idea. Um, overall, the machine increased its uh, outside diameter to 176 millimeters because they also uh, shaped the rotor a little bit like a heatsink and that's probably the biggest uh, modification, optimization in my opinion, because in all my measurements with the 160 Pro, the temperature of the rotor was the most critical part and now uh, trying to get rid of that heat, of those losses at that place is definitely a good idea. The price you're paying is, of course, uh, a bigger diameter of 176 millimeters and also more weight, and in particular, more weight which rotates, which is inertia. That machine, meanwhile, has a weight of 11.3 kilograms, whereas the older one, the 160 Pro, has a weight of just 7.8 kilograms, so one and a half times the weight. And uh, if you've got a bigger machine with more weight, of course, you expect also more power coming out of that one. And uh, they tell us that it's designed for continuous power of 15 kilowatts, peak power of 28 kilowatts. 
which is not such a big improvement compared to the 160 Pro with the old numbers, but meanwhile, interesting, they uh, corrected the values for the 160 Pro. It says just nine kilo, just, you know, 9,000 watts is still a lot. Uh, nine kilowatts continuous power in before in the old days, it was like 12 kilowatts. So if you have a machine with one and a half times the weight, of course, you also expect at least one and a half times the power coming out of the machine, which is true right now. Good. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have that machine, the 160E for testing over here. Uh, thanks to the guys of Reward, they offered that machine uh, for testing to me. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, shipping was, was too expensive for just making some measurements. So, but maybe that comes at a later point in time. So, uh, short summary, uh, all modifications are definitely uh, improvements, step in the right direction. Biggest improvement, probably the heatsink design of the rotor, which I also did with my, how did I call it, hedgehog design. Uh, also good news for me, um, they increase a little bit the temperature which I'm allowed to reach at the rotor. I always try to stay below 80 degrees Celsius. That is now corrected to 100 degrees Celsius. That gives me 20 Kelvin more temperature, increase in temperature to breathe. So I can have even more losses, higher powers, which is good. But the final question for such tiny, powerful, uh, with high density, power density uh, machines is how to get rid of the losses. And that's a common problem if we switch to another manufacturer, that is MREX, for instance. Um, so that's what they look like. Mm, what do they look like? Something like that, you know. Uh, they also built similar machines, outrunners, uh, brushless, with amazing data, comparable, also weighed just 8 kilograms and around about 10 or even 15 kilowatts continuous power. But problem over here is definitely also the cooling. Even though you're operating the machine somewhere over here right in the middle with an efficiency beyond 90%, uh, you've got around about 10% losses, which is more than one kilowatt. How do you get rid of one kilowatt inside of such a machine? And MREX uh, requires a cooling of 20 meters per second airflow. 20 meters per second is a lot. And how do you squeeze those 20 meters per second through a design which looks like that? Can you see those tiny holes over here? So you need a very strong external fan uh, providing that airflow. And that's the general problem of the, all those machines. Uh, the first data initially looks great. Uh, doesn't matter whether it's MREX or, or Revolt, uh, but think twice about how to cool it and how to install the machines to have enough fresh air uh, going in circuits around the machine. Okay, that's all so far. Next video comes soon because I started building the dual drive unit for my electric vehicle. So uh, stay tuned, comes in a couple of days. See you soon, goodbye.